like to welcome you all here uh, uh, as, as a member of, in, of the family, uh, Bob's siblings, uh, my brother John, my sister Patty, uh, my brother Donald, myself. I'd like to thank all of you for coming and sharing this moment and your stories with us, the stories that we haven't heard. Uh, just a couple things that I would like to say. Uh, the celebration of Bob's life is evident by the turnout here that a lot of you uh, have touched Bob in his, in his life. It's really a privilege that I get to speak to you about my brother. Uh, so let's the let the celebration begin. Whenever Bob was asked to do a family eulogy, as Liz mentioned, <laughs> he was asked quite often because he was very entertaining. And one of the things, there were two things that Bob always did with regards to a eulogy. The first thing is he always wore his announcer's voice, his broadcasting voice, whenever he did the eulogy. And he would express everything with using, using words, you know, his, his common words, tickle the twine, uh, that's a great, uh, what were the other words, yes, and, uh, and, and so forth. So he would always use those in his eulogy, and they would roll off his mouth, uh, his tongue with ease. But the greatest thing was that in each eulogy that he gave, he always referenced our family dog, Squeegee. That was the most important part of his speech. And, and I wondered what it was, and it was a life lesson about surveillance, about survival. And what happened was, is in the story, Bob, would, Bob, my brother Dick, and I guess John and I were involved too, would go to the section of Solomon Pond called the Ice House. And it was a section that was deep, and you could just jump right in to swim. And my father would go to the shoreline, and he'd, he'd take the dog, and he'd pick the dog up, and he'd throw him in the water, and the dog would swim back. And of course, Bob and Dick would, would have to jump in the water and swim back as well. John and I, I don't think, had to do it. But Squeegee always made every eulogy, so it was important. Um, well, glad you can make it again today. <laughs> The next thing I'd like to talk about is, is playing four quarters. In life, we have four quarters, in my opinion. And when I, when I talk about Bob, I'm going to talk about him playing his first quarter of life. The problem is, in life, with our four quarters, in that fourth quarter, usually we get tired and we run out of gas and, and we expire before the end of the fourth quarter. I'm working myself personally to make the end of the fourth quarter and to go into overtime. And I'm going to work hard at that, but uh, Bob wasn't able to. And a lot of people uh, uh, don't get that far as, as well. But one of the stories, I, I want to talk about three things. I want to talk, first of all, about dreams. Next, I want to talk about toughness. And the third thing I want to talk about is legacy. Okay? Uh, Bob was, uh, gave these three gifts to me personally, I feel, and probably my brothers and sisters as well. Uh, in, in terms of his, his dream. He had a game that he invented called Pencil Boys. I don't know if Bill Gibbons is here. Uh, Bill, is, Bill referenced that. Bill, Bill referenced that in, in, in his article he did, I think it was in November, uh, excuse me, it was in January of 2019, was it? Oh, that was Bill Doyle. Bill Doyle, yeah. That's yeah. Right. yeah. And, and so Bill, Bill wrote about the Pencil Boys. And the problem is, as I come here today, I was wondering if Togo was going to be here. And, uh, and, and I understand, Togo, that you were not one of the pencil players, <laughs> okay? You were not. He, he had Bob Cousy, he had Crafton, and all the players from the 46 and 47 team or 48 team uh, in there. But Togo, I just want to say, you weren't good enough to make Bob's team. <laughs> So you might have been in the top. Sure I bought four Rickey's brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so Bob created this game of pencil boys, and with, with the pencil boys, what he had in our house, we had a, a kind of a cape style house, and upstairs there were two bedrooms on each side in the hall. And there was a little uh, bureau up there that Bob hid his pencil boys in. He never wanted anybody to know that he would play with these pencils. But, and, and he'd take them out after supper, he'd go up and he'd play in the hall and he'd play with them and he'd create basketball games, as was mentioned. And the basketball games were generally Holy Cross versus anybody that they were playing that week or whatever. And he would have the Holy Cross team winning. Bob always talks about, you know, Bill talked about the fact that it was always 
Holy Cross versus Kentucky, the white and blue. Well, you know, back in the 1940s and 19, we didn't have white and blue pencils. We just had yellow pencils. So you knew they were all yellow, they were all different sizes. You know, and you indicated that one was, was Koozie and the Koozie would always get hurt. Well, the only way Bob knew the Koozie got hurt was because Brother Dick used to get mad at Bob for playing pencil boys. He thought it was a childish game. And Bob would have these wild dreams and, and fantasies and playing the games. So Dick broke Bob Koozie. So that's how Koozie got hurt. He couldn't finish the game. So in, in regards to that, what we found is Bob's dreams were really there. You probably don't know that Bob's dream wasn't to be an announcer. Bob's dream was actually to be an NBA player. He wanted to not only be uh, as good as Kuzi, he wanted to be better than Kuzi, and he wanted to replace Kuzi. So all those games that he played, and the reason he came in for Kuzi was that's who he really wanted to be. It never happened, so he took the second best choice and he became an announcer, and doesn't he end up having a great career at Holy Cross uh, for what, 48 years as the announcer of the basketball team. So that was his dream, and he got his dream. The second thing was toughness. Now Bob, wrote, Bob, people don't know how tough Bob really was. As a junior in high school, he played varsity football as a tight as an end. And, but in the JV game, because there were so few people, he would have to play the JV team as a quarterback. And in the Westboro, in the JV game before the Thanksgiving Day game, in his junior year, what happened was he was playing quarterback and he broke loose on a run and he was going for a touchdown. He got tackled and he broke four bones in his, in his arm, in his right arm. And he had to have a pin put into his arm and he had to uh, miss his entire basketball season his junior year. And in doing so, what he did was he, he would take me every day and I would, we would go out the, in the yard and play and we'd play basketball off the garage in the hoop. And he would play left-handed against me. And every day I would have to play him so he wouldn't lose his skills. And if uh, you're not familiar, but with Northville High School back in 19, 1956, their basketball team was one of the best in the state. And they won 23 in a row and lost their final game in the championship game of what was then called the Bay State Tournament. So that was his toughness. Another part of his toughness came when he went to Cushion Academy. My brother Dick was probably an outstanding, it was an outstanding athlete as well. And uh, when Dick went to Cushion Academy and spent the year of post-grad work, what happened was he, 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 he was such a good athlete, he won what was known as the Betty Davis Award for the Outstanding Male and Female Athlete at Cushion Academy. Bob went to Cushion Academy two years later. And Bob played football, played basketball. He was good in football. He was outstanding in basketball. And then he had to figure out how he could win the Betty Davis Award too. And Bob was a baseball player, but he wasn't a good one. And he knew that wasn't the way he'd have to go if he wanted to be the, win the Betty Davis Award. So what he did is he decided to run track. Now back in those days, small schools like Northboro High School never had a track program, so he never ran track in his life. Well, he went on to run track, he ran the mile and the half mile, and what he did is he set records in both for Cushing Academy, and he won himself the, uh, the uh, Betty Davis Award. So that was his toughness. Wow, <laughs> by him. And the last thing was is building a legacy. I thought the guy wanted to talk about Bob building a legacy. And what he did is he, he took and he passed those things, those qualities that he brought with him, his dreams, his toughness, the ability to adapt in, in, in adverse situations, and he gave them to all of his brothers and sisters. Okay? And I don't know, Patty, did you bring that poem that Brendan Perry? Right behind you. Yeah, I don't know if you had an opportunity to read this. This is the uh, the rusty old poop. I'm not sure who wrote the poem, but my son Brendan paraphrased it. And I thought it was a nice way to kind of capsulize all of those things that, that Bob stood for. So in it, it, it said, Brendan, Brendan said, the pursuit of dreams and toughness instilled in brothers Dave and John, the lessons learned and passed to sisters Linda, Patty, and baby brother Don. 
your legacy uh, celebrated every single day. That was my brother Bob in regards to that. The last thing I would like to talk about is, is family. And as you know, we have our immediate family, we have our extended family, and then we have our Holy Cross friends and other families that we'd like to uh, celebrate this time with. In doing so, uh, my son Blake wrote, uh, my sister Patty posted a picture of the four siblings that remain, and uh, my son Blake wrote a little something that I'd like to share with you that I think is apropos. Having it all together is not important. What's ma what matters is that by being together, we have it all. I'd like to take a photo of you people because there's so much love in this room for my brother. I want to share it with others. Excuse me for just a minute. Watching you play, Tobo, I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you very much, people. So much love in this room.